you to the first half of Grey Cup, 1959. And now, here's Ward Cornell. Good afternoon, everyone. And to those of you west of Winnipeg, good morning. This is Ward Cornell, along with Hal Walker, John Kearns, and your play-by-play -play commentators, Steve Douglas and Ted Reynolds, speaking from the Canadian National Exhibition Stadium in Toronto and welcoming you to Grey Cup 59. This afternoon, the third meeting in three years between the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. In 1957, these two teams met and Hamilton won the famous cup. Last year at Empire Stadium in Vancouver, the Blue Bombers won 35 to 28 in one of the most thrilling games in Grey Cup history. So today's game is the rubber match between Jim Trimble's Tie Cats and Bud Grant's Bombers. Many of you are viewing the CNE Stadium for the first time. The field here in Toronto runs east and west. Our CBC telecasting crew and cameras are situated on the north side atop the 21,000 seat grandstand. Across the way, the newly built south stand, capable of holding slightly over 12,000 people. And there should be a minimum of 33,113 people on hand because at last count, that's how many tickets have been sold. The weatherman, after dour and foreboding prophecies all week, has been most obliging. It's a bright, sunshiny day with a slight breeze blowing from the west off of Lake Ontario. The breeze doesn't seem to be strong enough to affect the kicking in any serious way. There was some snow overnight, but the groundsmen have it well cleared from the field and from the open stands. The temperature in the low 30s. All week long, there has been lots of talk about the field. Commentators, reporters, football officials, civic officials, just about everybody, and the general public included, live Grey Cup week in dread that the field on Saturday will be like it was that dreadful November Saturday in 1950 when the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Toronto Argos slithered, slipped, and nearly drowned at Varsity Stadium. Well, the fears of this week, prompted by rain, snow, and tarpaulin squabbles, were unnecessary. The field is in fairly good shape. The snow of this morning has been cleared off. The soft spots, and there aren't too many, were filled with a mixture of sand and sawdust and then covered with dust veins which has proved very effective this year in making slippery fields a little less greasy. The bad spots are mainly located just in front of each of the players' benches and in patches between the 5 and 20-yard lines in front of each goalpost. Both coaches early today walked the field and were not disappointed. This great cup, like all of them since 1948, has been filled with lots of excitement and color. Toronto was a fairly quiet city till late Thursday and again yesterday when the trains from the west started arriving. Since that time, the excitement has been building and won't reach its climax till the kickoff a few minutes from now. There'll be lots of pregame color with the Ticat Band and Majorettes, the arrival of Miss Grey Cup, 18-year-old Ann Finlayson, who was Miss BC, and finally, the arrival of the official party. But the most important people, as you can see, have already arrived, the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. For comment on the current champions, how they feel about today, the big one, is one of today's play-by-play -play commentators, Vancouver's Ted Reynolds. Hello, everybody. Well, the, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers we're looking at right now are probably as healthy a football team as has ever played in a Grey Cup game. Since the 26th of October, when they played their final league game against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, they have had to take the field, meaning business, only twice. In the two playoff games, uh, both of which they won, of course, against the Edmonton Eskimos. And apart from the fact that they are without the star of last year's game, quarterback Jimmy Van Pelt, who was seriously injured in a late-season game against Edmonton, they are, uh, some people in the East say, disgustingly healthy. In uh, Kenny Plain, they have the fellow who quarterbacked their club in the losing cause here against Hamilton two years ago. And if anybody coming out of the West uh, came with a mission this year. It was this man, Plain, and uh, particularly his teammate, the former all-star Canadian fullback, uh, Jerry James. Those two have not yet forgotten the bad afternoon that they didn't enjoy here at the Varsity Stadium two years ago, and uh, they know they're healthy this year. They have come to show the East uh, that that was not their best day. 
Only one change from published uh, lineups. Uh, it's a switch in the primarily defensive core of the Winnipeg team. And uh, they will have Nick Miller dressed. He is a fullback offensively and a deep back defensively. And uh, Tony Kerr, the Canadian fullback, who played a lot of ball for Winnipeg in their victorious game against this Hamilton club out at Empire Stadium in Vancouver last year, is not dressed. Otherwise, no changes in the long-published Winnipeg lineup. And this is an exceptionally healthy uh, Winnipeg club that we're watching right now, wearing their white with blue numbers and uh, their gold pants. This is your Grey Cup football telecast coming to you from the Canadian National Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. Ward Cornell again from the CNE Stadium in Toronto. And now for a look at the Eastern champions, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Here's your other commentator for this afternoon's game, Steve Douglas. Okay, Ward, hello, everybody. As far as the Hamilton Tiger Cats are concerned, the ball club very badly, of course, wants to win back the Grey Cup that it took a couple of years ago by 32-7 and then lost last year in that slam-bang, high-scoring affair, 35-28. to Offensively speaking... Well, Bernie Filoni, who has learned a great deal about passing attack in football in recent years, shoots for Hans Decker and Lampman and Jones, Howell and Grant in the backfield particularly. Sometimes he pitches out in the flat to big fullback Jerry McDougall. Hamilton running depends to quite a degree on the condition of this field. Ward Cornell described it to you very accurately just a few minutes ago. The ball carriers to watch for in the Hamilton attack on the ground would be the same Jerry McDougall, Ralph Goldston, and Dwayne Wood. Defensively, this is the big thing with the Hamilton Ticats. They have a tremendous defensive unit, stopped a very good running team in the Ottawa Rough Riders in the Eastern Big Four Finals. And uh, the Bombers, of course, are very likely to test the Hamilton defense very severely today because Winnipeg possesses one of the greatest outside running attacks across the country. And the Ticats might have to give up a little bit in order to contain the Bombers outside. And then I presume that uh, Shepard and James, on behalf of Winnipeg in particular, would be driving up the middle. Cam Fraser, who led the big four punters with a 45-plus average, will be in there as usual. Ward, we've got some officials getting together down there. You take it over, boy. We have the team captains of both the Bombers and the Hamilton Tiger Cats with the referee, so it's down to the field for the toss. I'm uh, referee Paul Dojak. The senior umpire is Mr. Seymour Wilson. The captains for the Hamilton team are Mr. Filoni, number 92, Mr. Honest Chuck, number 81. The captains for Winnipeg are Mr. Tinsley, number 64, Mr. Gray, number 53. Now the toss of the coin shall be called by Black. You'll call the coin all the time. Winnipeg wins the top. Your choice. Winnipeg will receive your choice of ends. You'll defend that goal. Ward Cornell back up top, and uh, there you met them. Herb Gray, Buddy Tinsley of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and they're dressed in the gold pants with the white sweaters and the blue numerals, and they've headed off now to the dressing room. And Steve Honestchuck, number 81, and Bernie Filoni, number 92, of the Hamilton Tiger Cats meeting. And as you can see, the Hamilton Tiger Cats will do the kicking, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will receive. A very interesting aspect of uh, the game here in the East in the past uh, two weeks, or rather the latter part of the season, and we don't know if this is typical of what might have been happening out west this year or not, but on two different occasions and in a very key game last week against the Ottawa Rough Riders, Jim Trimble, having his choice, elected to kick off rather than receive. And in the past few years, it's been the trend of coaches to get possession of the football and then you can score. However, Trimble, counting on his defensive unit, elected to kick off in the second half last week when he had the choice, thinking that his defensive unit could contain the Rough Riders and then they would be in a good position to score. And that, of course, is what eventually happened 
and we'll see today whether uh, this strategy keeps up in the second half if it's a tight, tense ball game. The referees for today, Paul Dojak of Regina, Seymour Wilson of Hamilton is number one umpire, Bill Nairn of Winnipeg is umpire number two, Johnny Monroe of Toronto, umpire number three, Ray Boucher of Ottawa is the field judge, and Taylor Patterson of Regina is the headliner. Well, just before we went down to the field, Steve Douglas was in the midst of his comments on the Hamilton Tiger Cats for a complete summary of that team. Here's Steve again. Ward, I was talking about the fact that if the Hamilton Ball Club was able to contain the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, one of the great strong attacking teams in running outside, then probably it would be Shepard and James in particular up the middle. Of course, going up the middle, a Winnipeg ball carrier will run smack into one of the great veterans of Canadian football, playing his 10th year in so far as the Hamilton football scene is concerned, formerly with Notre Dame and the Buffalo Bills, Vince Scott, an old Golden Dome as he is affectionately known here in the East, has played once again this year just plain tremendous football in a defensive sense. The uh, Ticats have improved very greatly on their linebacking spots this year. They have Eddie Bell picked up from the National Football League at left corner. They have Ernie Zangine at left inside. He uh, was with the Packers in the National Football League. They have Jim Taylor also from the NFL at the right inside linebacking spot and most likely to start out in his accustomed place is co-captain Steve Honestchuk, who injured his shoulder a few weeks back, laid off active duties on the gridiron completely, but then came back for a few place kicks and conversions, and finally, in the last couple of games, did a pretty good job insofar as backing that right corner spot was concerned, in spite of the fact that his shoulder was very heavily taped and wearing a special harness for the occasion. Uh, in deep defensive strength, the Ticats still have a man very well known from coast to coast in Canada. Those of you who followed CBC television coverage of last year's game from Vancouver well remember Ralph Goldston. He has incidentally switched his number this year. If you keep thinking about number 88 with Ralph Goldston last year, then you'll have to uh, do a little marking on your private schedule wherever you may be watching this ball game and check it out this year as number 80. Dwayne Wood, who is a rookie with the Ticats from Oklahoma State University, has proved to be a great addition to the ball club, uh, both on offense and defense, and is one of the other deep men and a veteran. Eddie Macon is the other man who winds up the deep defensive strength of the Hamilton Ticats. I don't know, Ward, it's, uh, and I think Ted will agree, sitting right beside me here as we very anxiously await the start at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time, that this uh, perhaps is one of the better toss-up Grey Cup ball games that we have uh, had the prospect of looking forward to for quite a few years. There was a great upset back in 1954 when Edmonton started that string against the Montreal Alouettes and Parker's electrifying run of something like 85 yards on that still much brooded about uh, Hunsinger lateral or fumble, as you happen to agree or disagree with the situation. Uh, that was a big upset. Since then, things have gone perhaps reasonably well, according to Hoyle. Uh, last year, the Ticats uh, picked up that 14-point lead early in the ball game, and then it was an up-and-down game from then on. And Ted, I don't know, the way things worked out in Vancouver last year, would you agree that that was perhaps the best ball game maybe you've ever seen, let alone a great cup game? I think that's uh, pretty well agreed all across Canada, Steve. Uh, no matter who won that ball game last year, the conditions were just as about as good as they could possibly be, and the football was thrilling from the time the opening whistle sounded till the time the closing gun went. I don't think there was anything you could expect or hope to see in any football game that you didn't see in that one uh, last year. And with these same two clubs, both of them uh, healthier than they were uh, last year, both pretty well rested, and with the field in the condition it's in, though it's, it's getting a little bit greasy now, I think that we can look forward to another thriller this afternoon. Well, both coaches are at times reticent about commenting on the outcome of the game, but both have agreed very definitely it's going to be a ball game that will give the fans perhaps their biggest thrill yet. 
This is your Grey Cup football telecast coming to you from the Canadian National Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. Ward Cornell again, back at Grey Cup 59 in Toronto from the CNE Stadium. And the Hamilton Tiger Cat marching band just completing a maneuver in the center of the field, marching down to the end zone at the west end. The color guard still out in front of the Grey Cup game. And now for a look at the defensive lineup for both teams. First with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, here's Ted Reynolds. Fred Ward, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, the front line is anchored by veteran middle guard Steve Patrick. He wears number 63, weighs 230 pounds. The defensive ends are on the left end, number 53, a Western All-Star, Herb Gray. The right end, number 78, is Ron Meadmore. The tackles on the left, Roger Savoy, number 62, and the defensive right tackle, a 10-year veteran with the Winnipeg Club, almost a perennial defensive all-star in the West, and the defensive captain of the Winnipeg Club, and the Winnipeg Club, 6 foot 4 and 245 pounds. Backing the line, the left corner is Burkholder, number 52, and Warren, number 44. On the right, right corner is Rowan, and uh, he, if he drops back to defensive back, will probably be replaced today on the corner by Miller. The deep backs on the left, Norm Rawhaus, number 70. On the right, Ray Ross, number 79. Uh, safety will be either Kenny Plain, possibly Ray Ross, or Roland might drop back. But it's very, very probable this afternoon that Kenny Plain, as well as going offensively as the signal caller, will see some action defensively as he is one of the outstanding safety men in Western Canadian football. Now for a look at the Tie Cats defensively, here is Steve Douglas. Along the line for the Ticats, defensively, at left end, Don Paquette, number 52. At left tackle, another great Ticat veteran, Eddie Bevan, number 51. We mentioned earlier the middle guard, Vince Scott, 53. The right tackle, John Barrow, number 61. And at right end, Pete Newman, number 74. The linebackers at the left corner, Bell, number 77. Left inside is Dan Jean, 54. Right inside is Taylor, 44. And the right corner is co-captain Steve Honest Chuck, number 81. And the deep backs will be Macon, number 90. Probably Wood, number 84, although there may be a change there. And at right in the deep line would be Ralph Goldston, number 80, to complete the probable starting lineup on defense for the Hamilton Ticats. In the center of the field now, the official party has arrived. The Prime Minister, John Diefenbaker, is being presented now, or rather the players are being presented to the Prime Minister, and these are the Shanley Award winners, number 64, uh, Johnny Bright, number 82, dressed in the uh, cardinal red and white of the Ottawa Rough Riders, is Russ Jackson, voted the most outstanding Canadian player, and then number 66 in the green and gold of Edmonton is the outstanding lineman in the country, Roger Nelson. Standing uh, to the right of the Prime Minister, Mayor Phillips of Toronto, and others in the group, there is the Commissioner of Football, Sidney Halter, to the top, uh, Mayor Steve Juba there, Mayor Lloyd Jackson, uh, Mayor Juba, of course, of Winnipeg, Lloyd Jackson of Hamilton, and other football officials gathered around in the center of the field. The officials that come out on the field, we're going to have the traditional uh, kickoff in just a few moments, and then the actual kickoff to the game. And now the players are being introduced individually, offensively. Here's Ted Reynolds. First man out for Winnipeg on their offensive team is their center, George Druxman. The left guard is... Cornell, Cornell Piper, number 58. The right guard, number 56. Ed Cotterwich. The left tackle, number 67, is Frank Rigney. The right tackle, number 52, is Dave Burkholder. The left end, wearing number 71, 
Joining the club after the start of the season, Farrell Funston. And the right end is the all-star offensive end in the West this year, number 77, Ernie Pitts. Starting offensively at left half, number 29, the man they call the Lincoln locomotive, Leo Lewis. On the other side of the half line, wearing number 22, is Carver Shannon. The left fullback, number 21, and the punter on this club as well as Charlie Shepard. On the other side, number 28, a former Canadian Player of the Year, Jerry James. And the quarterback for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, number 11, is Kenny Plain. That's the Winnipeg offensive starting unit. And now, here we go now. Cat. All right, Ward. <laughs> here we go now with the starting lineup for the Hamilton High Cats. Ernie Danji, number 54, being introduced first as the starting center today. Eddie Bevan, number 51. Right guard, number 64, Wisconsin University product, Dave Siminski. Number 53, Vince Scott. Number 61 is John Barrow, who was the Hamilton representative in the voting for the lineman of the year. Here's big Paul Decker, number 75, joining his teammates out there. And at the other side of the flanking spots, Harry Lampman, number 73. Tommy Grant comes out now, number 86, from Windsor, Ontario. Here's the co-captain, University of Toronto boy, Steve Honest Chuck. And then Ralph Goldston, number 80. And the flying wing, as he is introduced in the public address system here, is Ron Howell, number 82. And here's the master of magic at the quarterback spot, Bernie Colony, number 92. And that is the introduced starting lineup offensively for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. What we can look forward to today offensively from these two teams, well, it's hard to say because there should be some surprises. The Bombers work mainly out of a double fullback or a wing tee. Ted Reynolds tells me that they'll sometimes use... Uh, an expanded wing tee with the end split way out wide. Rumor, of course, that they might move into some single wing with some single wing blocking. For the tie Cats, uh, they'll pretty well stick to their uh, double fullback. They're, they have a tee. They also use an unusual spread formation, uh, the lonely Filoni formation, where Bernie Filoni stands deep. The fullbacks and the halfbacks are flanked out to the right and to the left. And, of course, Filoni can pass from the deep spot or he can roll off and run or he can roll off and pass. Whether there'll be any surprises today uh, thrown by Jim Trimble, well, we'll have to wait and see. The traditional kickoff now coming up. The Prime Minister, intent on doing a great job here, has taken off his top coat. Johnny Bright, number 24, who incidentally uh, made a tremendous impression on everyone here in Toronto, everyone in Edmonton. Well, we don't need to tell you. You already know what a fine young man he is and how proud you are, but he uh, shone very brilliantly here at the award dinner. And John Bright will hold. The press are gathered around. In the background, you can see hands on hip Roger Nelson and Russ Jackson a bit over to the right. All right, getting ready now for the official kickoff, the traditional kickoff. Some uh, press man uh, may be in for some trouble here. He may have a picture of a football right in the lane. And now the, now before the kickoff, the national anthem.
And the roar comes up from the more than 33,000 fans here for the first Grey Cup in the Canadian National Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. We've had the traditional kickoff, the Prime Minister being congratulated by those in the official party and also the Shenley Award winners, Johnny Bright, Russ Jackson, Roger Nelson. Everyone is moving off the field, the Thai Cat Marching Band, the Color Party, the official party, the players taking that last-minute jog to get themselves up, get themselves warm, get themselves excited, although uh, I don't believe either side really needs it. The Bombers have moved back defensively. They have their two deep backs along the five. Two forward backs at around the 28-yard line. Linemen up along the center field stripe. Tie caps have lined up defensively. Fans still coming into the park. There'll probably be some standing room in the corners. The field, as we said earlier, in fairly good shape. A little greasy, but should not in any way detract from the play today. The weather in the low 30s, it's a bright, sunshiny day. A few clouds coming overhead, but it, uh, it should be bright and shiny most of the afternoon. The wind blowing from the west. We're just about ready to go. Here's your play-by-play -play commentator for the first quarter, Ted Reynolds. Chet Mixer will kick off for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Graham marking the ball. Mixer comes up, kicks from his own 45. At the 20-yard line, the ball picked up by Jerry James. Makes it down very quickly underneath the kick, and James got it back to the Winnipeg 28-yard line, where it's Bombers first and 10. Look at the Hamilton defensive line. Kenny playing at quarterback. And Shepard is flanked wide out to the left. First play of the game is the handoff to Shannon. Turns in. And Shannon is across the 30-yard line. He was stopped by number 80, Wav, one, the right corner linebacker, Steve Honestchuk, who, as Steve told you, is in in his familiar starting position in the Hamilton defensive team. It's second down, seven, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with the 1959 Grey Cup game just underway. Both halves flanked very wide this time. Lewis left, Shannon right. The give is to Charlie Shepard. Shepard fighting his way as close to the first down. Shepard, Don Paquette was in on the tackle along with Kars, and the ball is across the 37-yard line, and here is the first measurement of the 1959 Grey Cup game. It's very close to a Winnipeg first down. The head referee is Paul Dojak of Regina. The ball, well, it's just about the length of the football, short. About inches short. Charlie Shepard, who led the kickers as far as averages were concerned, with an average of 43-plus this past season, is the punter for Winnipeg. And the Winnipeg deep men, Wood and Howell, have now moved back up as Winnipeg comes out in running formation. Then a fake as they shift. There's a marker. Quarterback sneak. And everybody got all piled up that time. An offside penalty against the Tiger Cats, so there's your first bit of Grey Cup strategy. As Bud Grant sent his club out in a running formation, then shifted Shepard back. The Hamilton club came off offside, and it doesn't matter how you get the first down as long as you do. They did. First and ten at their own 43. Make it 44, first and 10, Blue Bombers. Lane's handoff is to Leo Lewis going wide. 45 and down at the 45 yard line. Number 54 is Ernie Dangeen. Ralph Goldston, who was wearing number 80 this year, also in on the tackle.
This Grey Cup game in Toronto just underway with less than two minutes gone. Second down for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers as Lewis flanks wide out to the left. The first pass of the game as Plain fakes the pass, starts to run. And Plain is up across the Winnipeg, or out of the Hamilton at midfield into the Hamilton end of the field by about two yards. He was finally stopped by Eddie Bevan on a rather stop-and-go herky-jerky run. The plane dropped back to pass and decided to run himself. He got the first down. It's Winnipeg, first and ten. Plain has Shannon out to the left. Jerry James, headlong. Lands right on top of his head across the Hamilton 50-yard line. The ball is being spotted just outside the 50. The tackle was made by John Barrow, 240-pound Eastern All-Star. Second down, seven yards to go, Winnipeg. They have the ball and the Hamilton end of the field. Shannon, a flanker, wide left. Plain rolls to his right. Meant for Pitt. Good at the 35-30. And Pitts, in a play a little reminiscent of one last year that was very controversial, tried a sideline dance and was finally pushed out of bounds by Eddie Macon down at the Hamilton Tiger Cats 27-yard line. First and ten Winnipeg there, and that play looked a lot like one last year when Pitts took a pass from Van Pelt. He went all the way that time, darting and dancing, but was also ruled out. Shepard is a flanker left. Right up the middle goes Jerry James. As they unfile with James getting across the 25, the... Veteran Vince Scott was the man who made the stop. The ball is spotted midway between the 22 and 23 yard lines. Make it second down, six yards to go. Bombers haven't given up the football since they took over from the opening kickoff. Kenny Plain has a flanker left. The pitch is to Shepard. Shepard dives forward across the 20-yard line before he's stalked by Steve Onischuk. It's a first down for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Winnipeg first and 10. Onischuk stopped Big Shepard at the 16-yard line. And Plain staying mainly on the ground, but with one good pass play, has the Bombers moving very early in this game. Shepard again, hitting the right side of that Hamilton defensive wall. John Barrow again in to make the stop. Shepard was one of the outstanding fullbacks, as well as the outstanding kicker in the West this year. No score, five minutes. Have elapsed in the first quarter. Winnipeg threatening. Faked handoff. He's going to pass. Deep, deep down in the end zone was Carver Shannon. Way overthrown. Eddie Macon covering Shannon and playing overthrow him by a considerable margin. So the Ticat defense is stiffened. It's third and seven. Jerry James will attempt a field goal from directly in front of the goal posts, kicking off the 21-yard line. It's down, it's up. It is good. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers lead the Hamilton Tiger Cats by a score of three to nothing. 
Just over five minutes gone in the first quarter of the game. East or West, BA products and service are best. And East or West, whatever the final is today, the opening minutes of this ball game with the Bombers moving right downfield so successfully for three points makes it look like we're in for the best football game of the year. Here's Ted. Three nothing for Winnipeg. We were talking about Nick Miller earlier, and Miller has come out at a defensive back spot. Okay, the first offensive play for Hamilton. Handoff was to Ralph Goldston, and the tackle was made by Big Buddy Tinsley, number 64, the defensive tackle of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. It's a gain of two, second and eight, Hamilton. Gordy Rowland, who has been alternating at deep back and right corner, is back at his familiar spot. As Filoni is back to pass, the rush is on and he's dropped for a big loss. Back on the 30-yard line, Herb Gray came charging in there from his left end uh, defensively to get around one of the Hamilton defenders and drop Bernie Filoni for a big loss. It's third down now and 15. CBC television coverage extending even farther this season than it did last, particularly out in the West, we know, to many of the communities getting the game live on CBC television for the first time this year. Cam Fraser back to kick. Ball is coming down to the bouncing at the Winnipeg 40. Jansen upended neatly, dropped on the 40-yard line. Hitting him with a beautiful tackle was Billy Graham. This is your coast-to-coast -coast Grey Cup football telecast. Fraser's first punt of the ball game traveled 40 yards. Winnipeg scrummaging the ball at their own 40, first and 10. Punched in the left end to split off wide this time. Plain dropping back to pass. And for Funston, knocked down, almost intercepted up at the 50-yard line. Ralph Goldston darting in there very quickly to cover Funston on the play. Incompleted at second and 10, Winnipeg. Blue Bombers leading three to nothing on the 20-yard field goal by Jerry James. Field so far appears to be holding up fairly well. It looks a little greasy in spots. Plain rolls to his left, fakes the fumble, recovered by the Hamilton Tiger pass. Nino Tart dove on top of that ball just inside the 25. It was meant for Charlie Shepard as Plain faked the rollout, handed off on the reverse to Shepard. He never did have his hands on the ball, and on the Winnipeg 34, Karsh dove headlong, had a clean shot at it, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats take over. All right, Filoni pitches to McDougal. McDougal has room. Sheer power carries Jerry McDougal inside the Winnipeg Blue Bomber 25-yard line. Finally stopped by Ron Meadmore. First down for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Some of the fans still coming in here at the CNE Stadium in Toronto. Pitch to the left this time. McDougal again, and he's dropped at the 20. Gain of two. Pitch right, then a pitch left by Bernie Filoni, trying to spread the Winnipeg defenders. All right, this time, pitch is to Golston, and Golston moves to the 15. It was dropped by Ray Ross. Moving up from his defensive back spot. Dugo got six. Third down, three yards to go. Winnipeg defense is set. The crowd yells, go for it. 
Maloney calls those signals. Pitches to McDougal. He can't pick it up. He finally grabs that ball, but it's nailed for a big loss back at the Winnipeg 24-yard line. Herb Gray in on top of him. And uh, the Blue Bombers, who lost the ball on a fumble, recover on downs and take over again first and 10 at their own 24. Winnipeg leading 3 to nothing, just past the midway point of the first quarter. No offensive changes for Winnipeg. They flank Leo Lewis wide right. Lane gives it to Jerry James, tries the left side. James across the 25 to the 27-yard line. He was stopped there by John Barrow, number 61. Barrow, very big at 240, very fast for a man his size. One of the final candidates in this year's outstanding player balloting in Canada. <laughs> Shannon is flanked right this time. Second down. Lane throws, completed at the 35. 40 to the 45 and wrestled out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Shannon was grabbed and hauled out of bounds. Ernie Dangene was over there and also number 84, Dwayne Wood. The penalty marker. The officials are discussing it at the 39-yard line. The call is illegal interference. It's first and ten for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at their own 35-yard line. The referee is Paul Dojak, Seymour Wilson of Hamilton, Bill Nairn of Winnipeg, and John Monroe of Toronto are the umpires. Ray Boucher of Ottawa is the field judge, and Taylor Patterson of Regina, the head linesman. First and ten, Blue Bombers, they lead 3-0 past the midway point of this first quarter. Shepard and Shepard after having to wait to pick up his blockers, moves forward to the close to the 40-yard line, a gain of five. Eddie Macon, number 90, making the tackle. Four minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Three nothing for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the uniforms beginning to get a little dirty. Playing again on this reverse to Lewis and it fooled no one in that Hamilton defensive unit that time. Lewis just got to the line of scrimmage and no farther. Eddie Bell, number 77, was right there. And Dave Siminski. Howell and Wood, the deep men for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. They're standing on their own 25-yard line. Charlie Shepard will kick off his own 27. Puts it away, and the spiral is high, but not too deep. Picked up by Howell at the 42, and he gets across the 45-yard line. Your neighborhood, Mr. B.A., has enjoyed bringing you televised football this year and really hopes that you're enjoying Grey Cup 1959. Well, you should, as these two fine teams block crisply, hit hard, and there should be lots of action ahead, just like we've had so far. Here's Ted. Eddie Macon almost got to Charlie Shepard. He rushed him on that kick. There was a low snap, and the kick traveled only 28 yards from the line of scrimmage. Hamilton Tiger Cats are first and 10 at the 47. Trying the middle is McDougal. Give him two. He moved almost to the Hamilton 50. Stopped by Herb Gray. Various work done on the field prior to the game to try and absorb what moisture there was, but it was freezing up till about two hours ago. It's now melting a bit, making it slightly greasy. Baloney dropping back, lots of time to pass. And it's completely incomplete. Bobbled and danced around 
by Harry Lampman, who was playing tit-tat-toe for about five seconds. He was being covered by two. Third down. Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Jim Trimble's back as he examines the situation with his club changing as the kicking team moves out onto the field to kick on third down with eight yards to go. Three-minute whistle has just sounded. The Hamilton shift, Fraser dropping back inside his own 40. Fraser gets it away, bounces at the 23. Jansen finally gets a hold of it. He didn't gain anything at all. Eddie Bevan, down very quickly underneath that punt, was the first man to hit him in the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Take over first and 10 on their, call it their 21. It's just outside their own 21-yard line. Fraser, who averaged over 44 this season in Big Four football, rooted that one 44 yards. Blue Bombers leading by a score of three to nothing. There are less than three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Plain calls the signals, fakes the handoff. He's going to throw. He has Farrell Funston, who can't reach the ball, up at the 45-yard line, incomplete. Dwayne Wood was back, keeping a pretty close eye. Ralph Goldston on the intended pass receiver, Farrell Funston. Second down, 10 yards to go. Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The ball between their 21 and 22. All right, quick kick. Shepard gets it away. It's high and a good kick, chasing those defenders back to their own 35. Eddie Macon gets across the 35 to the 37, where he is dropped, leading the assault. Farrell Funston, the left end. This is your coast-to-coast breakup football telecast. Charlie Shepard got 55 yards with a little help from the wind, kicking from the east end as he was on that quick kick. Hamilton Tiger Cats, first and 10 at their own 37. Maloney's pitch to McDougal. McDougal finally finds running room and gets across the 45, down almost to the 48-yard line. Jack Delvo, the corner linebacker, Tackled McDougal, but it is a first down Hamilton. One and a half minutes remaining to play unofficially in the first quarter. Winnipeg leading Hamilton three to nothing. Flankers left and right, right up the middle this time for the Tiger Cats. Jerry McDougal, who's been the big man carrying the mail so far this afternoon for them. As they unpile, a bit of a consultation between officials and players. It's second down, six yards to go. Hamilton at the tight cat, 52. Baloney sends a man in motion left, fakes the pitch, the handoff. Was to uh, Ralph Goldston, and Goldston did not reach the midfield strike. He was stopped by Steve Patrick. The middle guard. It's third down two, and the Hamilton kicking core comes out. Deep men drop back. Jensen is number 12. And Ron Latterell, number 17 for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Fraser will kick off his own 43 yard line. Rather high snap. In close to being blocked by the onrushing Gray. It's fielded by Laterell. Laterell going wide. Gets to the 25 upended by Billy Graham again, who really hustles down underneath those punts. Raider kicking to Laterell. In the last minute of the first quarter, with Winnipeg leading by a score of 3 to nothing. The unofficial time now is 32 seconds.
Bombers first and ten just outside their own 25-yard line. Lane looks over that Hamilton defense, drops straight back to pass this time. Swing out to the left, meant for Lewis, incomplete. He couldn't hang on to it. Second down. And there is probably time for one more play in this first quarter. Second and ten, Bombers. Backs in tight for Winnipeg this time. Looks like another quick kick. Shepard gets it away, and it's another good one. Chasing the Hamilton defenders back to their own 20. Dwayne Wood finally turns at the 17 with the football. Pursuit is on. He gets away from two men and is knocked down at the Hamilton 26-yard line. Burkholder was the man who finally got to him. A 68-yard kick by Charlie Shepard as twice in a row Winnipeg takes full opportunity of what win there is. At the end of the first quarter, the Blue Bombers lead a three to nothing. This is your Grey Cup football telecast coming to you from the Canadian National... Ward Cornell again from Toronto. In that first quarter, the Blue Bombers rush for 47 yards. Hamilton for 26 the Blue Bombers picked up 23 through the air, none for the Tie Cats. Six first downs to two for Winnipeg. With the second quarter, here's Steve Douglas. Right, Ward, the Tie Cats first and 10 from their own 26 yard line. With the drive by Jerry McDougal, right up the center. And the first man to make contact defensively was Roger Savoy, number 62 of the Blue Bombers. And McDougal picks up about four yards for second down and six to go. The ball is about halfway between the sideline stripes on the second play from scrimmage in the second quarter coming up. The Blue Bombers three, the Tie Cats nothing on an early field goal by Jerry James of Winnipeg. Grant flanks on the far side. Howell is out this way. McDougal in motion. Maloney is trapped for the second time. And the man who wrapped him up was Steve Patrick, the six-year veteran and one of the outstanding middle guards in Canadian football, number 63. The loss goes back to the 22-yard line. Third down coming up, about 14 yards to go. And Jansen and Latourelle will once again be on the punt receiving end for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. There they are, between midfield and the Winnipeg 50-yard line. The Hamilton Ticats continuing to employ the peculiar shift when Fraser comes into punt. He's standing on his 10-yard line. High boomer that Jansen comes in for, fumbles, and it is covered finally by a tie cat after two or three of his teammates had a chance at it and lost the ball. And Hal Walker has the glasses on that big pile up down there, and he says Eddie Bevan, one of the great veterans of tie cat football wars, who finally grabbed the football. The tie cats have the ball, first and ten, on the Winnipeg 52 and a half yard line. And the clouds have cleared away once again, and the sunshine is bright again. Into action quickly, McDougal on the short pitch out. It's across the 50-yard line. Hit down on the 48. The pickup will be close to four yards on the play. Buddy Tinsley, the co-captain, one of the great defensive warriors of Winnipeg history. With the field today in a little bit uh, greasy condition at spots, it's interesting to look back in the records of the Grey Cup and figure out how many times fumbles have played a great part. The record was six by Winnipeg in 1957 and by Ottawa in 1939. Poloni still got it. And he's going to try a shot that is into the arms of the intended receiver and right out again. And Gene Jones was the intended receiver. He was being guarded by Jack Delvo, recent acquisition by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who startled all the Eastern Canada football fans in that frigid weather game, the final playoff against the Edmonton Eskimos, by playing with his shirt sleeves pushed up well above his elbows. A psychological twist by Mr. Delvo. Jansen to the left, Latorell to the right, and there at the 20-yard line at the Winnipeg end of the field, and Fraser has come off the tie cat bench.
Cam is just inside his own 50-yard line. And now the receivers have moved back to the goal line, and Cam gets away a pretty good one. Latrell at the four-yard line. Across the 10, and he is squeezed down to the ground on the 15. Bringing televised football to fans clean across Canada is Mr. B.A.'s way of saying thanks for your patronage. Shepard's kicking today. He's had three 28, 55, and one great 68-yard quick kick. Gives him an average at the present time of a little bit over 50 yards a try. Here's Steve. Ward, that last one by Cam Fraser traveled 45 yards from the line of scrimmage. It was Chet Mixer who brought Latterell down on the 15-yard line. It's Bombers first and 10 from that point. The pitch out by quarterback Kenny Plain, and the gain is negligible, stopped almost at the line of scrimmage. Jerry James was the ball carrier. The Ticats employing some changed defenses insofar as the forward wall is concerned this afternoon. They have moved Eddie Bell, normally left corner linebacker, up to left end defensively. They've switched Don Paquette, number 52, to right end. And they have Zeno Cars playing the left corner linebacking spot. Plane to Charlie Shepard and the big fellow dives through a hole that opens up in the right side of his own line and met by left corner linebacker Zeno Cars at the Hamilton Tie Cats. This will leave the Bombers about three yards short of a first down and will send off the Hamilton Tie Cat bench, Ron Howell, to join his teammate in punt returns for the Tie Cats, Dwayne Wood. There's Howell number 82 and Dwayne Wood at the top of your screen number 84. Shepard is just inside his 10-yard line to kick. He hoists a real good one. Howell from the 42-yard line. And he's upended by number 71. That is Farrell Funston of the Blue Bombers, their fine left offensive end. And he dumped Howell on the 47-yard line. And Shepard continues his fine kicking with that one booming 46 yards from the line of scrimmage. Time remaining, about 11 minutes and 25 seconds unofficially. That clock here, of course, mainly for the benefit of spectators. The officials keep the correct time at the timer's bench. Pitch out is to Goldston, looking for running room, puts his head down, he's across the 50-yard line. Dave Burkholder, the University of Minnesota boy, stops him on the 51-yard line. His pickup will be just about four yards, second down and six to go. Baloney pitching out to Jerry McDougal, starts wide, cuts back, and is stopped short at the 45-yard line, which will leave the Ticats with about three yards to go for a first down. One of the great defensive stars from the West, Herb Gray, number 53 of the Bombers, made the stop on him. So off the Ticat bench comes the kicking team, and from the Winnipeg bench on the other side of the field, those two boys, Jansen to the left, Latterell to the right. As soon as Fraser shifts back into punt formation, the Winnipeg receivers go deep. They're about the five-yard line now. Fraser gets a whale of a kick away. Latterell right at the goal line. At the five, ten, head down, and he is upended. And finally stopped, and a little bit of roughness goes on down there as he's hit down on the 14-yard line. 56 yards from the line of scrimmage, that kick by Cam Fraser. And it was Billy Graham, one of the small men on the field at 5 feet 7 and 175 pounds, who is a demon downfield tackler, and that's why he's in the Hamilton Ticat lineup today after not seeing too much action all season long. The ball is on the hash marks, 20 yards in from the near side of the field. Winnipeg 14-yard line, bomber possession. Kenny playing the quarterback, set to move. Jerry James upended as he hits the line of scrimmage. Sprawls high into the air. It was Johnny Barrow who got to him first. James stopped by. Pick up on the play by 
Barrow is good for a little more than three yards. Second and about seven to go. Lane looking, throwing to Carver Shannon and overshooting him by a couple of yards, defending on him for the Tie Cats. On the far side of the field was Eddie Macon. So it comes third down and about seven. And Howell and Wood will team together once more for the Tie Cats as they have done all season long as punt return men. And Charlie Shepard, who owned a 43.1 average this year in Western Conference play, and who today has been slightly fabulous with his boots, is back on his own five-yard line to kick. The Hamilton receivers, with the sun right smack in their eyes, are ready. It's blocked! And it's in the end zone. Vinny stopped chasing it. He loses the ball. And a great pileup occurs. Now let's watch and see what happens. Vince Scott, the great middle guard of the Ticats, broke through... It is one point, and it was Jack Delvo of the Blue Bombers who recovered the ball after Scotty lost it in the Winnipeg end zone. Scott burst through tremendously, but the Tie Cats just get one point. This is your Coast to Coast Grey Cup football telecast. Bombers put the ball in play, leading now by three points to one from their 25 yard line. Terry James, the ball carrier. Getting nowhere as he tries the right side of the Hamilton defensive wall. Ernie Dangene, one of the linebackers, Eddie Bevan, Pete Newman all in on the stop. Three to one, the Bombers over the Ticats. About eight minutes, 45 seconds to half time. Lewis is a very wide flanker for the Bombers toward the far sidelines. Playing himself, hands off to Lewis coming this way. And that end is open. And he goes sliding. And you saw what happened to the tie cat, would-be tackler, who was the same Vinnie Scott, who chased him out of bounds and got himself a mud bath at the same time. Lewis got uh, seven yards on the play for second, uh, third, and three to go. Third down, three. Howell and Wood... Howell at the bottom of your screen, Wood at the top. They are between the 35 and 40 yard lines at the Hamilton end of the field. Shepard is standing inside his own 20. High pass from center, and he got away a very nice kick. Chases Howell back over his shoulder catch at the 27. Bumped into bounds by Funston, and the officials mark it at the 34 yard line. First and 10 for the Hamilton Ticats from their own 34 yard line. Grey Cup 1959 from the CNE Stadium, Toronto. And on this cold afternoon, we're getting great performances from both teams. Fine defensive work, great pursuit work by Tinsley along the Winnipeg line and Scotty for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And for cold weather performance from your car, you can't beat BA Velvet 98 or 88 gasoline. Here's Steve. Shepard's last kick was good for 50 yards. Baloney into the arms of Ron Howell who, as you football fans remember, was his favorite receiver on long tosses in last year's Grey Cup game, and Gray makes the stop after the Ticats get the first down. Baloney's first completion for the Ticats this afternoon through the air. Ball is on Hamilton's 45-yard line, 20 yards in from the near sidelines as the Winnipeggers set their defense. And Kenny Payne is in there at the safety position, for the Blue Bombers. And that thought hit Ted and hit me at the very same moment. The chat is to McDougall. He gets around Roland, and down he goes, and powers his way across the 45-yard line at the Winnipeg end of the field. Ray Ross, the number one man to get in there on the stop. And safety man Kenny Plain also helped out on the tackle. A fine run by fullback Jerry McDougal of the Ticats. Seven and a half minutes to half time. 
Three to one, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Field goal by Jerry James. Saloni coming this way. Throws intended for McDougal. It is over his outstretched hands, incomplete. Jack Delvo was the man covering on him. And once again today, Delvo, number 23, has got those sleeves pushed up beyond his elbows. The temperature here does not compare with that four, six, eight, whatever it may have been above zero in Winnipeg, but it's in the low 30s here and a little bit nippy. In the Hamilton backfield, Wood comes in to replace McDougal. Second down and 10 yards to go for the Ticats. They are just inside the Winnipeg 45-yard line. Grant flanks on the far side. Howell comes out this way. Wood goes in motion. Baloney. Drawing very deep, intended. Downfield for Ron Howell. It is incomplete. He got a big bang from defensive star Herb Gray of the Blue Bombers, and the pass was a little bit on the wobbly side, and it's third and ten for the Ticats. Winnipeg deep men getting set to the left, Jansen to the right, Latorell. Jansen was rookie of the year with the Blue Bombers in 1959 WIFU football. Right now they're between the 15 and 20 yard lines, but they may move. As Soon as they're sure that Fraser's going to kick, they pop back about 15 or 20 yards. Fraser will kick. And a beauty of a kick. Jansen, about four yards inside. He's across the five-yard line, spilled down on the seven. 49 yards from the line of scrimmage. It was Jim Taylor and Ernie Dangin who grabbed him on the seven-yard line. The Bombers put it in play first and ten from that point. At five minutes and 18 seconds of the first quarter, a field goal by Jerry James. And then in this second quarter, a single point when Vince Scott blocked a Shepherd punt, went into the end zone, fell on the ball, but lost control of it, and Delvo recovered the ball for Winnipeg, and that's how the single was scored for Hamilton. Charlie Shepherd finds no running room as he tries just inside right guard. It was middle guard Vince Scott who grabbed him first. And his gain on the play is perhaps one yard for second down, nine to go. The field here, with the exception of the sideline areas and a couple of spots, is holding up remarkably well today. That is Shepard again, and when he appears to be stopped, that is when he pours on the speed and a sudden burst took him up very close to the 16-yard line. Scott, the principal tackler, as the middle of the Hamilton defensive wall gangs up on Charlie Shepard. That is third and about a yard to go. The Ticats expect a kick, and Howell comes off the bench. About a yard to go. Very little possibility that coach Bud Grant would permit his ball club to gamble in a spot like this too deep in their own territory, and Shepard is back to his own three-yard line. A low bullet that bounces on the 50, taken at midfield by Dwayne Wood, and he's hit almost immediately by Ernie Pitts. The Ticats will take it first and ten from that point. A yard or so inside the 50-yard line at the Winnipeg end. This is your coast-to-coast -coast Grey Cup football telecast. From the field and from referee Paul Dojak, the five-minute signal has been given to both teams and to the stands here. Baloney pitches up to McDougal, who may throw. He grounds the ball. Now watch what they call it. It is recovered down there for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers by Steve Patrick. It was Jack Delbo who wasn't being fooled on the play at all and rammed into Jerry McDougal. Appears as if they're going to call it intentional grounding. There was a penalty marker on the play.
It is second down and 20 yards to go. Down. The ball is on the tie cat, 52 and a half. Maloney to McDougal, who came this way, tried to find his receiver, and hit by Delvo, and the officials ruled he intentionally grounded the ball. Maloney. Pass is intended down at the Winnipeg 35-yard line for Tommy Grant, and it goes incomplete. He is being checked defensively by Ray Ross. Prior to the start of today's ball game, Ted Reynolds mentioned the fact that Kenny Frayne would likely see a lot of service today, and he has been in in the safety spot defensively for the Blue Bombers most of the afternoon, in addition to quarterbacking all the way so far. The regular two punt receivers for Winnipeg, Jansen and Latterell, are back around the 5 to 10 yard line. Fraser kicks another fine one that Jansen comes up to the 15 4, fumbles, and falls on the ball. No matter how many new footballs come into the game and how well they are cleaned off on the sidelines by a man who is doing that job and that job only today, is still a little bit on the greasy side. Graham and Cars put the stop on Jansen as he brought the ball back to the spot marked down by the officials, the 18-yard line. First and 10 from that point with 3 minutes 50 seconds to the end of halftime. Kenny Plain nailed on the 12-yard line. Eddie Bevan, the number one man to get in there and grab him. And number 61 was the other man. That's John Barrow. Incidentally, at halftime this afternoon, the Hamilton Ticat marching band and majorettes will be the big display. And so far as entertainment is concerned, James, and there could have been a little uh, mix-up in that Winnipeg backfield. Plain and James came together for just a split second, but enough to knock off that timing. Vince Scott made the tackle on James, so it's third down and about 16 yards to go. And a three-minute signal has been given from the field. Again, the Hamilton receivers look directly into the rays of the sun. There they are, you saw them, Wood and Howell. Shepard stands on his own goal line. Wood took it on the 53, across, and dumped first by Farrell Funston. And the stop was completed down there on the 47-yard line by Frank Rigney and Rick Potter. It is Hamilton's ball on the Winnipeg 47-yard line, 20 yards in from the near side of the field. Two minutes, 45 seconds to go, and Winnipeg leads the 59 Grey Cup by three points to one. Flankers are left and right. Handoff is to Ghost, and the hole opens up. And he is filled, but hits down on the 39-yard line. The man who got to him first was Gordy Rowland. Hit him low around the ankles and just upended him. Gain on the play, about six. Second and four yards to go. Grant flanks on the far side for the Ticats. Howell out this way, Wood in motion. Goldston carries, grabbed around the ankles again and falls forward to the 35-yard line, which should give the Ticats a first down. And you saw the signal by referee Paul Dojak. Ralph Goldston, who carried the ball, is shaken up on the play. Jack Delvo, part of the Winnipeg Defensive Brigade that put the stop on Goldston, dove in very hard from the side. Jerry McDougall is coming off the Ticat bench to take Goldston's place. Only in the latter stages of the season have the Ticats utilized Ralph Goldston to any degree uh, in their offensive team, both Jimmy Simpson 
and Pinky Lewis of the trainer's department for the Ticats and club physician Dr. Jim Charters are out there working with him. And he's up. Off the field reasonably well under his own steam. It is first down for the Thai Cats in the nose of the football. Oh, an inch or two short of the Bomber 35-yard line. Time running out in the first half. A minute and 45 seconds left to go. Flankers right and left. Poloni pitches back to Wood. He's nailed. And he's hit hard by C. Looning, who broke through the right side and grabbed him before he had any chance to start running. The loss in the play is seven yards. It is second down and 17 to go. Bomber set their defense 5-4-3. The linebackers are not crowding up at all. A couple of them drop back a step or two. Expecting Filoni to go to the air here late in the first half. He does. Shooting for Jones, who got his right hand on it and tipped it over the head of the deep defender who was Ray Ross. Third down, 17 to go. The Winnipeg line is giving Bernie Filoni, the Hamilton quarterback, a mighty big rush. Bernie has been overshooting a couple of times and has had passes tipped. Razor throwing complete to Lenny Chandler up to the original line of scrimmage and maybe a yard more. And that's all. And the minute flag has gone up on the sideline. The Blue Bombers take over first and ten on the 35-yard line. Winnipeg end of the field, less than 60 seconds to go. A report from the Hamilton bench indicates nothing wrong with Ralph Goldston, who was banged up a few plays back. Plain, looking, almost getting away, but two or three Thai cats all had a piece of him and dragged him down on the 27-yard line. Vince Scott is in there, so is John Barrow. Numbers 53, 61, respectively. Loss on the play, seven yards. Second and 17. Lewis comes this side and Shannon to the far side for Winnipeg. Lane hit again, shakes the first man off and is nailed with a shoestring tackle back on the 25-yard line. Scott is the man who did it. Scott, obviously, is trying to make up for not controlling that football in the Winnipeg end zone here in the second quarter when he blocked the punt, went in, and saw the ball squirt out from underneath. And Delvo covered it for the Bombers, and they gave up just one point. James had that five-minute field goal in the first quarter for a 3-1 Winnipeg count now with seconds to go to the end of the half. Shepard on his 12-yard line to kick. Another low bullet that is taken and kicked back by Ron Howell. Picked up by Rick Potter and he's dropped on the six, seven yard line. That is the end. That is the last play of the first half of the 1959 Grey Cup game. With the score, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers three and the Hamilton Tiger Cats one. And this is your Grey Cup football telecast coming to you from the Canadian National Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. Ward Cornell back at CNE Stadium in Toronto, Grey Cup 59. The team still in the dressing room. The officials have come out. We're a few minutes away from the kickoff of the second half. Statistically in that first half, it shows how strong the defensive units have been. 
Winnipeg of Rush for a total of 58 yards. Hamilton for a total of 29. Passes attempted by Winnipeg, six. Completed one. Yardage gained 23. For the Ticats, they've thrown nine. Completed three. Total 38 yards. The kicking average for Winnipeg, 46 yards. And for Hamilton, 44. And our two commentators, Ted Reynolds, Steve Douglas, have returned to our CBC telecasting booth. And I'd like to ask them their comments on that first half. All right, Ward. Well, uh, whatever there is that you can say, I'm quite sure you've already said, because with the score only 3-1 to one between these two high-powered football clubs after 30 minutes of action, there is obviously not a great deal that can be added. Uh, the breaks have been certainly against the Hamilton Tiger Cats so far, particularly, of course, uh, when Vinny Scott was unable to hang on to the squirming football and instead of producing six points for his club on the blocked punt, was able to uh, only hold the ball temporarily. Then Jack Delvo came in and salvaged five points for his club. I suppose if you want to, you could call that a turning point if there has been one or if there ends up where there's going to have to be one. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers are now coming back out onto the field in their white what's left of their white jerseys some of them are getting awfully dirty with the gold pants and they move across to the far side the south side of the CNE stadium all you can say is that the way things have gone with all the predictions that have been made up and down the length of Canada it's obvious that there's got to be something erupt in the second half because I don't think anyone dreamed uh, for a moment, that there would be only four points scored in the first half of this game. Steve Douglas, what about you? Well, I guess it could be on behalf of Eastern football fans, a lot of uh, if this had only happened and if that had only happened. Uh, Jerry McDougall slipped in one case uh, when he had apparently a clear field on a sweep around end. Harry Lantman juggled the ball, and Ted has already mentioned the case where Vinnie Scott, going into the end zone after blocking the kick himself, just was unable to handle the football, and Delvo came in, and so only one point went on the scoreboard for the Ticats. I think the big thing so far about the ball game has been tremendous play along the line by both ball clubs, and I know that the members of the spectators division of football who are here this afternoon, and we haven't had an official count so far, are getting a great charge out of this game up to this point. The Ticats taking the field as the Bombers, you see, were huddled there around their own 40-yard line. And we'll have this third quarter going in just a few seconds. Well, it should be a thriller as these two crunching teams fighting for the rubber game of a three-game series over three years. The Tiger Cats won in 57, the Bombers last year, and 30 minutes from now, we'll know who, is, who it is in 59. We're just about ready for the kickoff. Here's Ted Reynolds. Macon, Howell in the center, and Dwayne Wood, the deep men for Ticat, standing around their own 10, and Jerry James will move up to kick off. He does it left-footed, drives a bullet that Jerry McDougall fields at the 30-yard line. Turning to his left, McDougall moves back right to the 40 of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and trailing 3-1, the Ticats take over first and 10 there. Cease winning the defensive end. He's down to make the stop. And Bernie Filoni comes out as the Winnipeg club huddles defensively. Number 53, who so far has been playing a, his usual exceptionally stout defensive game, is Herb Gray. Flanker very wide right now for Hamilton. As the second half gets underway, Filoni fakes the quick toss. Now it's a long, long, long pass. About eight yards out in front of his intended receiver, uh, Tommy Grant, who was away down about the 23-yard line, and the ball went even farther than that, second down and 10. Gordy Rowland dropped off his right corner spot and accompanied Grant all the way downfield. That was the longest pass attempted by many yards so far this afternoon. All right, second and 10. Maloney swings it out to McDougall. And uh, a lusty collision between McDougall and Jack Delvo. And there's no gain. There's 
a loss of about a yard, making it third and 11. Hamilton at their own 30 to 39, and the kicking team is in. Laterell, 17, Jansen, 12. We're standing at the 35, but now drop back as Fraser comes back into punting position on his own 27-yard line. Gets it away, very high. Bounced outside the 35, and there's a penalty marker as the Hamilton players were caught by a bad bounce. The Winnipeg receiver had to move forward about 10 yards to get hold of the ball as it almost went down and stayed in the mud. Hamilton questioning the play, and it, the penalty is declined. Fraser was one of the kicker was one of the first men down there. That was the question uh, put to the officials by the Hamilton club. The penalty declined. It's first and 10 on the 40-yard line. But it is not declined. The penalty was rescinded. As Fraser was ruled down there, he was the punter. Charlie Shepard hitting the right side of the Hamilton line for a gain of about three. Ernie Dangene, wearing number 54 in the black and gold of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, made the stop. Vince Scott has injured his hand by the looks of things, and Bud Grant is alternating his guards a little bit, sending in plays. Second down, seven. Lewis is flanked right. Hand off is to Charlie Shepard again, and Shepard moves across the 45, Eddie Bevan, tackling him there. Gain of about three. It's third down, three yards to go, Winnipeg. The second half of this football game just underway. As the temperature apparently diminishing a bit, the deep men are back. Number 82 is Ron Howell. Number 84 on the far side of the field is Grant. Shepard gets away a very high, wobbly kick for not much distance. Again, Winnipeg players trying to get out of the way, and that was Shepard who came darting in there, so we may have the same type of thing as we had last time. The marker was dropped, but it could be a rough play call against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. We'll wait until the officials decide and make their ruling on the play. It is against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers for rough play. During this timeout, this reminder, light up a Rothman's King Size, the world's largest selling King Size Virginia cigarette. Carse is the player shaken up. The penalty is for rough play against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And that moves the ball back inside Winnipeg territory at the Blue Bomber 53-yard line, a 15-yard penalty. Tiger Cats have it there, first and 10. They trail 3-1. The Hamilton supporters are now beginning to whoop it up. All right, Filoni is going to throw at the 50. Golston moves to the 45-yard line. Hit and stopped right there by Garland Warren, the inside linebacker. And for the past two or three years, one of the star inside linebackers in Western football. Warren, the player who made the tackle was shaken up a bit and has been replaced by Walt Balicki. Now Golston, the player who was carrying the ball in that play, was also shaken up. For the second time, he was injured slightly in the second quarter. Steve Honestchuk moves in on offense. And uh, Bud Grant is also making some changes in his defensive alignment. Maloney is 4 for 11 in the passing department. Second down and about a yard to go. No more. Maloney gives the handoff to Dwayne Wood, and Wood moves 
for about seven. He only needed one for the first down, and the Ticats are moving down deeper into Winnipeg territory. They have the ball first and ten at the Winnipeg 37-yard line. They have played three minutes of the third quarter. And the Hamilton Thousands beginning to get the feeling of the thing. Man in motion left to pitch out again to Wood. And that time he couldn't get around Gordy Rowland. And Walt Pulicki, number 47, also there to make the tackle for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. It's second down, 12 yards to go. A two-yard loss. And the field, we don't believe, is in any worse condition than it was at the beginning of the, field, uh, beginning of the game. Still the odd greasy spot. Fake handoff by Filoni. Tries to get away from Gray. Does have a good block. Filoni's still going. And he finally tripped over one of his own men. The man he tripped over was number 73, Harry Lampman. Maloney got a fine block to get away from Herb Gray, who was in hot pursuit. There's little or no gain on the thing after all that running by Bernie Filoni. It's third down and still about 11 yards to go. Cam Fraser will have the wind with him for this punt. The deep man who, as usual, Laterell and Jensen... We're standing at the 10, have now dropped back about 10 yards inside their own end zone. And Fraser shows the reason why as the ball is fielded and then brought out to the floor by Laterell, who skids along in the mud of the track. He fielded that ball four yards deep in his own end zone, was knocked down by Don Paquette into a touch by Paquette. And the Bombers take over after the 43-yard punt by Cam Fraser inside their own five-yard line. And they've seen very little of the field past about their own 40 since the first quarter. They lead by a score of 3-1. to one. Wayne Lane shoots Leo Lewis, flanking wide out to the right. Gives the ball to Charlie Shepard, and Shepard slipped but got around the corner cutting in across the left side of the Hamilton line. Eddie Bevan, number 51, stopped him. The gain was five. It's second down, five yards to go, Winnipeg. Farrell Funston, the left end, is split off ten yards this time. Pitch. And it's not enough for the first down. Lewis turned the corner on the left side. Was stopped up close there. Vince Scott was in on it. John Barrow. Pete Newman. The Hamilton receivers are Ron Howell, number 82. Wayne Wood, number 84. Saw them standing at their own at the Winnipeg 52. Shepard will kick from inside his own end zone. That was almost blocked. Gets away a very short kick. Fielded by Howell is at the 40 and leaps out of bounds and across a small lake at the 36-yard line. This is your coast-to-coast Grey Cup football telecast. <laughs> Okay, quickly, the pitch to Jerry McDougal. McDougal trying to follow his blocking, but went for only about two yards before being dropped by Walt Balicki, who is still in there. It's a gain of two, second down, eight yards to go, Hamilton. Again, they have the ball inside the Winnipeg 35-yard line. Pitch to Bernie Poloni to Jerry McDougal has been Poloni's favorite. 
offensive weapon so far this afternoon. Straight back to pass, gets it away complete at the 24-yard line. Harry Lampman hauled the ball in at the 24, was dropped right there. And it's a first down for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, who are continuing to threaten here in the third quarter. They trail by a score of three to one. Pitch again to McDougal. He's got good blocking this time. Gets away from one man, 15, 10. McDougal gets inside the 10. And it's finally hauled out of bounds at about the seven yard line. Farrell Funston finally got to him. Make that Kenny Plain, who's playing in the safety slot. Number 11, moving back into the Winnipeg Blue Bomber defensive huddle, and uh, McDougal moved to the seven. This is as close to pay dirt as the Hamilton Club has been so far today. First and goal to go, Hamilton. Wood, and Wood is caught before he can move. He was grabbed that time by number 73 for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Cease Looning, the defensive end. <laughs> Again, a consultation. Poloni standing in there representing Hamilton. Bud Tinsley, number 64, the defensive captain for Winnipeg, ruling at the Bombers offside. Maloney's still talking to referee Dojak. And that moves the ball inside the Winnipeg five. It is placed just outside the Winnipeg three-yard line, where it's first down and goal to go Hamilton. Winnipeg with a seven-man line. Flankers left and right. McDougal hits to the two, or inside the two, driving to the left side of the Winnipeg line. It'll be second down and about two yards to go. Arrow just coming into the Gray. Hamilton huddle. Herb Gray made the stop on McDougal. Gray is number 53. Now they have 13 men to assist them in defense. One of them is the blue wrapped goalpost. As they're just to the left of the Winnipeg goalpost, it's second down. Maloney calls those signals again. It's McDougal, and he was tripped up. Fine tackle by Jack Delvo, who came driving in there. Number 11 just getting up slowly is Kenny Plain, who's playing an awful lot of defense as well as calling the entire game offensively. And Steve Onschuk is now coming onto the field, which means a field goal attempt by the Hamilton Tiger Cats. They are in excellent position right now to move ahead by one point in the ballgame. The attempt will be from directly in front of the goalposts, and Honest Chuck will have to kick the football only 10 yards. Maloney holding right on the 10. Down, up, it is good. And the Hamilton Tiger Cats lead the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here at the CNE Stadium by a score of 4 to 3. Seven minutes and uh, ten seconds remaining in the third quarter. So the Bombers take over the football, first and ten at their own 35. Twice before in Grey Cups there have been 4-3 final scores. Those were records. All right, the pitch on this side. Lewis cuts back inside, and Lewis getting across the 37. Met by three Hamilton Tiger Cat defenders, led by Vince Scott, inevitably. Steve Onischuk. 
Honestjock playing that right corner almost all the way. And Vince Scott, as we pointed out a couple of times, and as he always does when the chips are down, playing another sterling defensive game. Lewis flanks wide right for Winnipeg. Lane drops straight back to throw. Can't throw, can't run, and is blocked by Vince Scott. Eddie Bevan also in there. That Winnipeg offense is just not able to move out that stout Hamilton wall. Ron Howell and Wood standing back at the 30-yard line. Shepard will kick off his own 25. It's a high wobbly snap. Again, a bad kick by Shepard that bounces into touch at the Hamilton 50. They'll have to change that football. That one will be quite dirty. Half a Rothman's king size. First in Canada, first in the world. The ball is at the 50-yard line, and it's first down for Hamilton. Charlie Shepard, who was having a wonderful time kicking the ball, except for the block in the first half, got that one only 23 yards. Hamilton, first and 10. They lead 4-3. to three. Winnipeg player was offside. Whether he got back on, the handoff was to Wood, and Wood hits forward to midfield. Buddy Tinsley. Big Winnipeg tackle, tackling Wood, a gain of five. It's second down and five yards to go, Hamilton. Bernie Filoni dropping back to throw. It's complete to Howell at the 45-yard line of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Stopped there by Norm Rahaus. And it's a first down, Hamilton. Hamilton, first and ten. Baloney pitched to McDougal again. He's got those blockers out in front of him. Bud Tinsley finally got over there and shoved him down, along with uh, number 44, Gar Warren. And there's a Hamilton player shaken up just briefly, but just a little bit winded. He was not injured or down long enough to require medication. Dave Siminski, the Winnipeg defensive huddle. Speaking of punting averages, as we were a moment ago, the best ever was in 1937 by Bob Isbister of the Argos. 52.3 yards average in a Grey Cup game. Second down and eight yards to go. Loney straight back to pass again. Gets it away too high for the intended receiver. Fielded on the half volley by Kenny Plain. Meant for Ron Howell. So it's third and eight Hamilton. And again the toe of Mr. Fraser comes into the football game. Hamilton leading by a score of four to three. CBC television coverage of the 1959 Grey Cup game on the shores of Lake Ontario, and there's a big crowd. There's the deep men, Jansen and Lateral for Winnipeg, and as always, they drop back about 15 after waiting for Cam Fraser to shift back. He gets away his 11th punt of the game. It, too, is almost to the end zone, not quite. Lateral fielded it at the 4 across the 10. And he is down at about the 12-yard line. This is your coast-to-coast -coast Grey Cup football telecast. Winnipeg huddling inside their own five. The ball will be scrimmaged at the Blue Bombers' 12-yard line. They trail four to three. Playing with the last word to Charlie Shepard. Just to show he wasn't fooling. Gives the ball to Shepard who tries to turn the right corner. Make that Lewis, not Shepard. He got around that corner up to about the 16-yard line. Stop there. We'll wait and see. They'll spot the ball at the 17. Lewis, 
Lewis, the halfback, who was held in tight that time. Three-minute whistle. Second down, five yards to go. Leo Lewis flanks left this time for the Bombers. Up to the 22-23 yard line. Carver Shannon, who was at the full gallop, and it's a first down for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Vince Scott made the tackle on Carver Shannon. Good opportunity to watch that peculiar running style of his. Very high knee action. First and ten, Winnipeg. Lewis again, trying to turn that corner on the right side and can't get around it. Met by two men, stopped and held. John Barrow was the man who led the tacklers. The gain by Leo Lewis, two yards, second down, eight yards to go, less than three minutes left in the third quarter, 4-3 Winnipeg. 4-3, rather, for Hamilton. Lewis is flanked away out to the left this time. A fake by Plain. Now he decides to run. Caught and run out of bounds by Zeno Cars For a rather large loss on the play. He was pushed out at his own 17-yard line. Third down and 14 yards to go for the Bombers. Howell. And number 84, Dwayne Wood, are standing at their own 50. Wayne, on five straight occasions now, has been dropped for a loss. Shepard kicking off the four, gets it away, angling it toward Howell. Howell has it. Ronnie Howell still going to 45, 40. Oh, a terrible mud pass down there on the track. Howell managed to stay relatively clean in that one. It was the two Winnipeg players. <laughs> Gordy Rowland and also uh, Frank Rigney who got a real bath down in the mud. Good run back by Ronnie Howell at first and ten Hamilton at the Winnipeg 40. Bernie Filoni throwing complete to Howell 25. And he was pushed out of bounds by uh, Norm Rahaus right at the 25. First and 10, Hamilton. Unofficial time, a minute and 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Hamilton leading by a score of 4 3. Threatening here. Pitch to McDougall. McDougal caught from behind by Bud Tinsley and Gar Warren. As he got across the 25 to about the 22. And the flag is up. Angela Mosco, number 62, is the big fellow who's been trying to lead McDougal around that corner on just about every one of those pitches to the left. Second down and seven. Hand off to McDougal again, and McDougal gets to the 20. Steve Patrick made the tackle. Unofficial time now is half a minute. And Steve Honestchuk has moved off the bench. It looks like another field goal attempt. There is also an injured player, an injured Tiger Chats. Honest Chuck Stowe put the Tiger Cats ahead 4-3 to three in this quarter, and it appears that he's going out to try and make it 7-3. to three. Still working on the injured Hamilton player, Dave Siminski, who was shaken up a little while ago but did not leave the field with the player injured. He is coming off under his own steam.
Third down, Hamilton. They have the wind with them. Ball being scrimmaged from the 20, and Honestchuk will attempt the field goal from the 27-yard line. Bernie Filoni holding almost directly in front of the goalpost. It is good. And the Hamilton Tiger Cats take a lead of 7 to 3. Hamilton flag waving along the sideline. Two field goals by Steve Onischuk in this third quarter have put the Hamilton Tiger Cats out in front. They trail 3 to 1 at halftime. Bombers will scrimmage from their own 35. Kenny Plain calling those signals. End off was to the fullback, Jerry James. And the gun ends the third quarter. And the score now is the Hamilton Tiger Cat 7 and uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 3 at the end of three quarters of this 1959 Grey Cup game. This is your Grey Cup football telecast coming to you from the Canadian National Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. Ward Cornell with you again. CNE Toronto 59 Grey Cup. Four points separate these two teams as we start the fourth and final quarter. Here's Steve Douglas. All right, Ward. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers have the ball second down. A little more than six yards to go from their own 38-yard line. Lewis throwing on the run, complete to James, who is dumped as he crosses the 45-yard line. Eddie Macon, the man for the Tie Cats, who put the stop to the advance by Jerry James. It's a Blue Bomber first down. One yard past their 45-yard line on the first play from scrimmage in the fourth quarter. The score is seven for the Tie Cats of Hamilton and three for the Blue Bombers of Winnipeg. Plain is the quarterback. Shannon is the ball carrier. Look at him turn the speed on. Wood chasing him and grabbed him up around the shoulders and wrestled him down to the ground near the far sideline. First down for the Bombers on the march. From the early minutes of the first quarter, the Western fans here in Toronto have not had too much opportunity to hoot and holler today. Now they start to make themselves heard. Lewis, the Lincoln locomotive, is down to the 40-yard line. A nice run as he started out wide to the far side and then cut back sharply, met by Don Paquette. Today playing defensive right end, the Tie Cats, and Pete Newman, who has dropped off to a corner linebacking spot. It is second down and roughly two yards to go, right on the 40-yard line, and they've brought the ball 20 yards in from the far side of the field. And the roar from the Western fans increases. Shepard tries the right side. He may have that first down. Linebacker Ernie Dangene, number 54, is on that tackle, and they'll come up with a measurement. Dwayne Wood also got on it. Measurement coming. That is the only, only the second measurement of the afternoon. The first came early in the first quarter, now early in the fourth. Here's number two. Referee Paul Dojak supervises it. Short by inches. The other officials working with Paul Dojak today, the umpires of Seymour Wilson of Hamilton, Bill Nairn of Winnipeg, John Monroe of Toronto, the field judges Ray Boucher of Ottawa, and the headlinesman is Taylor Patterson of Regina. It is third down and inches to go for the Bombers. On the tie cap, 38-yard line. Playing the quarterback. On a sneak, right up the middle. He's got first down yardage. Herb Gray, who is primarily a defensive all-star for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, has been playing at guard 
and was in on that play to lead the charge. And Gray has now gone to the bench on the far side and got a pass in the back from his coach, Bud Grant. This is Lewis, starting wide, cutting back, being hit first by Macon. Lewis gets barely to the 35-yard line, just over it. His pickup on the play is a little more than a yard. Gray started to come off the Winnipeg bench and is waved back by the official on the far side of the field. Seven to three for the Tie Cats. Twelve minutes and forty seconds left in the ball game. Single flanker is Shannon on the far side. Lane rolling, looking down the middle, shooting, almost intercepted. It was Steve Anischuk who dove for the ball. That was intended for Carver Shannon. So it's third down and about eight and a half to go. The Tag Cats are not sending those men deep as yet. Now Howell goes back and he's going to be all alone. He'll go into the end zone. Shepard is standing on the 47 yard line. Gets away a fine kick that Howell takes in the dead run and is nailed in the end zone for a single point. Which just serves to tighten things up real good now. Funston it was who nailed him for the point and it's Hamilton 7, Winnipeg 4. And the clock shows 12 minutes and 12 seconds left in the ball game. A field goal separates the two teams. The tension mounts, the excitement increases. Time for a real filter cigarette. Have a rough and king side. Should there be a tie at the end of the ball game, there will be a 15-minute rest period and then a 20-minute ball game, meaning 10 minutes each way with a kickoff to start both halves. Bolston carries and he speeds down across the 30, very close to the 35-yard line, and it's Gordy Rowland who makes the stop for the Bombers there. Rowland playing right corner linebacker, number 27. Goldston, who has been racked up twice this afternoon, doing a fine job on offense for the Tie Cats. He leaves them with just about a yard to go for a first down. McDougal carries across the 35, and it should be sufficient for Hamilton first down. We'll see. Cats from their own 37-yard line. All 20 yards in from the near side of the field. Hamilton leads by 7-4, to four, 11 minutes and 15 seconds to go. Grant flanks on this side. McDougal carrying. Fumble! And it looks like... Wait a minute now. Be sure it's a Winnipeg recovery. Co-captain, Buddy Tinsley, the big guy, number 64. There he is. Recovered the fumble for Winnipeg. The first Hamilton fumble of the afternoon, Buddy Tinsley. Put a lot of men around that football, and the Bombers now have the ball inside Hamilton territory on the 43-yard line, first and 10. Steve Anischuk made the tackle, desperation as it may have been. Dunstan from the College of the Pacific in his first year with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, six feet two and 205 pounds, and he got behind his defender, took the ball about the five-yard line, and Anischuk made the grab. It traveled 41 yards, pass and run. On the two-yard line, Winnipeg knocking on touchdown door. Charlie Shepard into the end zone for a Winnipeg touchdown, but hold it. There is a marker on the play. Let's be sure what that marker means. It looked like a tie cat offside, which naturally is refused. That's it. And Charlie Shepard is into the end zone for the first touchdown of the afternoon. 
You saw the referee signal. Penalty refused. Now it's Winnipeg 10, Hamilton 7. Jerry James, the left-footed kicker, will try for the extra point. It is good. Jerry rifles the ball, and he adds the point. So make it the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 11, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats 7 with 10 minutes and 6 seconds left to go. More than ever at this moment, with 10 minutes and 6 seconds left to go, the Grey Cup Final 1959 is a natural between Winnipeg and Hamilton. The Bombers 11, the Tiger Cats 7, credit Spotter Hal Walker. As a few gusts of wind kick up around the CNE Stadium in Toronto, keeping that ball on the tee. Here's the southpaw kick by James. Taken by Dwayne Wood at the 25. Oh, he is hit hard. And stopped on the 28-yard line. And the tackler got the worst of that bargain. Jack Delvo, who drove in hard down below the knees and is getting up very slowly, shaking his head as he gets up. And back down to one knee again. There's a timeout on the field, and we'll take time to remind you that it's time for a Rothman's king size. The one cigarette that really satisfies. The clock on the scoreboard reads nine minutes and 59 seconds left. The score, 11 to 7. Anything can happen as we go into the last half of this last quarter of the 59 Grey Cup. Here's Steve Douglas. Well, coast to coast, I don't know what the weather may be. It's getting a little chillier here in Toronto. But we certainly hope that coast to coast along the CBC television line that football fans everywhere are enjoying this Grey Cup battle. Delvo has left the field. Rick Potter, number 14, has come in to take his place. Left corner linebacker. Filoni being chased. Got away from Gray. And it's finally nailed, and down on the 12-yard line. The man who got through number 62 is Roger Savoy. And the loss in that play will be about, let's see, 13, 16 yards, roughly. Would be second down and 26 yards to go. At times down this sideline where the down sticks are, it's a little bit tough to figure things out because as Ted has explained it, it's a sea of mud down there, but the field itself continues to be holding up in remarkably good shape. The ball is on the Tiger Cat 12-yard line. Second down, 26 to go. Goldston shaking off the first man, and the second. Oh, he's down on the 10-yard line. Winnipeg tacklers came driving in as two of their teammates held Goldston up. It gave them a chance to get in and put the stopper to him on the 10-yard line. Jack Delvo, a hard rock, eh? After just going out, being quite badly shaken up on a play a couple of minutes back, is back in again, and it was he who stopped Goldston on the 10-yard line. So it's third and about 27 to go. Latorell and Jansen in the vicinity of midfield, and Fraser for Hamilton, three yards in the end zone. Cam gets away a good kick, lateral over his shoulder catch. Held down, he actually slipped as he ran into Jim Taylor of the Ticats on the Ticat 48-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Blue Bombers from that point. They're in front of the ball game by 11 to 7. The third consecutive meeting between these two teams in the Grey Cup. This has happened only twice before in Grey Cup history that the same two teams met three years running. Back in the late 40s, the Toronto Argonauts beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers three years in a row. And in the mid-50s, it was Edmonton over Montreal three straight times. The out is to Shepard, and Pete Newman grabs him behind the line of scrimmage. Once again, there is a tie cat down on the field, hurt on that last play. 
And in the grueling play that has been going on, particularly in the line today, there have been many occasions where play has been held up momentarily because of injuries, but so far, very fortunately, none of them have been of a serious nature. Eight minutes, 43 seconds. That's unofficial. That's the clock time here at the CNE Stadium, Toronto. And the clock runs primarily for the benefit of the fans in the stands. At the timer's table in the sidelines, they keep the official time of the ball game. You can see that it's impossible, even with powerful field glasses, to find out who may be the injured player because the members of the training department are blocking the view. Lake Ontario in the background. Shipping still in operation with no problems to speak of. Ernie Dangene is the man hurt on the play. Second down and 13, Shepard Crick kicks again. Fine kick. Chasing Wood well into the end zone. The ball may go all the way through. It's into the snowbank for a single point. Shepard. The quick kick went 76 yards. Johnny Kearns, if you'll pass over a facts and figures sheet, I want to check those other quick kicks by Shepard. He had one for 55 and one for 68 and he gets better with that all the time that one 76 and the score is 12 points to seven for the bombers over the cats hamilton takes possession on the tie cat 25 eight minutes 20 seconds remaining baloney trying to chase his men down field shoots long and it is bobbled and almost intercepted by Kenny Plain, who made a nosedive into the turf trying to get it. The intended receiver was Ronnie Howell. Normie Rawhouse was defending for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on Ron Howell on that play. And it's second down, 10 to go. The intended receiver in the vicinity of the Ticat 45-yard line was Jerry McDougall. The pass was a good two yards off to his left from Bernie Filoni's throwing position. So it comes third and ten. With the kicking team coming off the Hamilton bench from the far side of the field where the Winnipeg bench is located. Latourell to the top of your screen, Jansen at the bottom. And they're sneaking away from midfield inside Hamilton territory, and then they go back to midfield as Fraser goes back to his own 12-yard line. Jansen takes it just inside Winnipeg territory is buried as he crosses the midfield stripe. Denoble got to him first, and yes. Billy Graham completed the tackle. It is on the Hamilton Ticat 54-yard line, first and 10 for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. <laughs> 5 3 4 defense with the linebackers sneaking up. An eight man line right now for the Ticats. Lane looking, shooting a short pass, and there is going to be a holding penalty called against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and number 56 is the culprit, and that is Ed Kotowicz. Shepard was the man who was on the receiving end insofar as the pass was concerned. It brings the ball back inside the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, 50 to the 46-yard line. First down, 20 yards to go.
Carver Shannon carries. Ernie Dangin got a hand around his shoulder, knocked him off balance, and he hits down on the ground on the 51-yard line, stopped there by Steve Honest Chuck. Second down for the Bombers, about 16 yards to go. Shepard pulls back, quick kicks again. Ooh. Another honey. It chases Wood back. This one lands in the five, bounces to the two, and Wood is stopped and stopped permanently right there. Farrell Funston, very fast under those quick kicks by Charlie Shepard, and this one traveled 58 yards. Ticats ball, two and a half yards out from their own goal line. They trail by 12 to 7. Goldston starting left, turning across the five, stopped at the seven-yard line. Pickup will be three, maybe four yards. Buddy Tinsley met him first. Buddy, number 64, defensive right tackle for the Bombers. In case you're thinking that Buddy is a big fellow and has been around a long time, you certainly are right. He is six feet four, 245 pounds, his 10th year with Winnipeg. Gannon plays four yards, second and six to go. Pitch out to Jerry McDougall, and he'll be very close to a first down. But the Ticats apparently believe that he has not made it, and they send their kicking team off the bench on this side. Tinsley again is the number one man to make contact defensively for the Bombers. That yardage measurement was easily misread by yours truly that time because it was to the five yard distance that they were going and not to the full ten there. So the Tie Cats naturally have to kick and Fraser goes five yards into his own end zone. Latterell takes it at the 36-yard line. He was hit first by Don Paquette, number 52, and Eddie Bevan completed the stop. Right in the middle of the field, that is midway between the sideline stripes, and on the Ticat 35-yard line. Bombers possession, first and 10, five minutes and 19 seconds, the unofficial time to the end of the ball game. Short flanker on the far side is Leo Lewis. James fumbled, but Kenny Plain dove for the ball and appears to have made the recovery in spite of the fact that four or five Ticats were diving at the same time. Bell and Dan Jean were in there. And Don Paquette covered the situation finally, but uh, it was the completion of the fumble recovery by Plain that gives Winnipeg continued possession. And the five-minute signal has come up from the field officially to the end of the ball game. Ted Reynolds has left our premises here and will be talking to prominent football figures in the interview room following the game. Plain has still got it. Throwing very deep into the end zone intended for Pitts. And Pitts almost made a fantastic catch. Slipped through his fingers as he was checked very closely by Dwayne Wood and also Eddie Macon. We are hoping to have the captains and coaches of both ball clubs in the interview room following the game. And the commissioner of football, Sidney Halter, will make the presentation of the Grey Cup to the winning captain. Ted Reynolds on his way down there now for that ceremony, so be sure you stay with us at the completion of this game. And let's hear what these footballers have to say. <laughs> Shepard ready to kick to... Howell and Wood in the end zone. Charlie gets off another fine kick. Wood takes it and is going to give it up. Steps into the snow back beyond the end zone. And the Winnipeg margin is now six points. The Bombers 13, the Tie Cats 7.
Well, of course, once again, this just manages to tighten things up even a little bit more. With four minutes and about 20 seconds to go, Ty Cats in possession starting from their own 25 yard line, trailing by six points. They can generate the attack here and go all the way. Well, then the great big thing would be what happened on a convert, but we've got to wait until a score is made first. Well, only looking. Throwing very long. Sent it for Tommy Grant, almost intercepted, and at the same time, almost turned into Grant's hands. And it was Gordy Rowland defending in very fine style for Winnipeg. Defensively, the Bombers are double and sometimes triple teaming. They would be Ticat receivers as they go deep for Filoni's passes. Ross was also down defending there with Roland. And Kenny Plain wasn't too far away. Plain has played very nearly all of this ball game and has done so in outstanding style. Second down, 10 yard to go. Ticats from their 25. Filoni completes it to McDougall. And he is hit low, and out of bounds he goes in the far side of the field. Defensive left end, Herb Gray, made the tackle for Winnipeg. But that will leave the Ticats with about three yards to go. And will pose a pretty good problem, but not for too long to Coach Trimble. He decides to kick, figuring that a lot of things can happen in three and a half minutes. Sunshine continues to grace us here at the CNE Stadium in Toronto with the game sent to you coast to coast in Canada by way of the CBC television network. And Fraser is going back to his own 20-yard line. And now the Winnipeg punt receivers have the sun in their eyes. Latterell and Jansen again. End over end kick. That the boys... Play Alphonse and Gaston with for a moment. And then Latterell gets back about seven or eight yards on a fine run back right in the middle of a lot of Hamilton tacklers. And that little guy goes off the field, really pumping. Jumps up after he's been hit down and races for the sidelines. And it was Jerry McDougal who got him. So Winnipeg has possession, first and ten, on the Winnipeg 30. 48-yard line. Winnipeg's 48-yard line, and we have had the three-minute signal from the field. Less than three minutes to the end of the ball game. 13 for Winnipeg, 7 for Hamilton. Jerry James tries the left side. The hole opens up, and he could have a first down. He'll be very close to it. Jerry James, number 28 of the Bombers. Ralph Goldston came up from his halfback spot defensively and got assistance on the tackle from John Barrow. Taylor is going in defensively for the Tie Cats, replacing Dan Jean at one of the interior linebacking spots. They'll measure to see if it's a first down. First down by the length of the football. Perhaps a very valuable first down for the Bombers, enabling them to retain possession with the clock running out, now showing two minutes, 32 seconds. And at the three-minute mark, it was very close to the official time, just a few seconds off. Shannon, a wide flanker on the far side. The inside man is Lewis. Lane handing off to Shepard. It tries the left side, still digging for yardage. And the man who had hold of him for the bear hug was Vince Scott, who has been doing that most of the afternoon. Shepard on that one held to a couple of yards, pick up for second down and eight to go. Bobby Dawson making his first appearance in the Hamilton Ticat uniform this afternoon, replacing Dwayne Wood at a halfback spot defensively. Dawson is the number two quarterback to frontman Bernie Filoni, but the Ticats have gone all the way with Filoni so far. Lewis flanking on this side of the field for the Bombers now. Playing to Shepard again, he tries the same hole and hit by the same man, Vince Scott, the Ticat middle guard. And also by John Barrow, 
the right defensive tackle. No gain on that play. Third down, eight yards to go. And Wood comes off the bench to join Ronnie Howell. Wood to the left, 84. Howell to the right, 82. And Shepard will kick, and this will give the Ticats possession. And there'll be something like a minute and a half to go when they get the ball. A wobbler lands on the eight, bounces deep into the end zone. Could go all the way through. Lateral over to Hull. No, he stepped out of the end zone. The officials have signaled another point for the Blue Bombers. So now, a converted touchdown would just tie this ball game. Sixty-eight yards from the line of scrimmage, the kick traveled from the trusty right toe of Charlie Shepard. One of the Blue Bombers racked a bit deep in the end zone on that last play, and so play on the field cannot continue until everything is okay. Shepard, who has been doing a magnificent job of kicking for Winnipeg, has hoofed it 17 times so far. Fraser has kicked 15 times. It is Ernie Pitts who is injured. And the situation right here now is a minute and 21 seconds. That's unofficial to go in the ball game. Winnipeg leads by the margin of a converted touchdown, 14 to 7. And Pitts is up and being helped off the field from the far end zone. And play goes on. McDougal slipped just a bit as he got the direct handoff from Bernie Filoni. And he'll pick up maybe two or three yards in the play, met by the Bombers' middle guard, Steve Patrick. And Garland Warren, number 44, also on the tackle. They give him two, down, two yards, second and eight to go. The man with the minute flag is making ready to put it up. It is up now. McDougal scooped the ball up. It goes as a completion. But there is practically no gain on the play. No, they rule the pass trapped and not completed. So it's third down and eight yards to go, and time is running out on the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And members of Toronto's constabulary beginning to ring the field here to keep the fans from roaring over it when this game ends. Filoni will try the air on third down. Out to McDougal. Shakes off the first tackler, but not sufficiently. It was Gordy Rowland, the right corner linebacker of the Bombers, who had hold and just wouldn't let go. And McDougal was down on the 34-yard line, which is short of a first down. And so we have something like 30 seconds to go with the Bombers in possession on the Ticat 34-yard line. And it is to be presumed that quarterback Kenny Plain will just run the clock. They will also utilize all the possible time in the huddle, which they are doing right now. Clock shows 20 seconds now. Plain faking. Plain is throwing deep for Ernie Pitts. For a touchdown! Oh, those Winnipeggers, eh? Ernie Pitts getting the congratulations of his teammates as Kenny Plain straightens up and with only about a play or two remaining, throws into the end zone. Pitts beat his defender, and the Blue Bombers have a total of 20 points now and will try to make it 21. For the point after touchdown, Jerry James makes it good. And the rush is on for the football, way deep in the end zone in the snowbanks. 
And the score is the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, 21. The Hamilton Tie Cats, 7. And we have 10 seconds showing on the clock here. Left in the 1959 Grey Cup game. Ted Reynolds will be talking, we hope, to the captains of both teams and the coaches of both teams. And Commissioner Halter will present the Grey Cup to the captain of the winning team. And believe me, down on the field below, as you can probably see by some of the Bombers' antics, they can hardly contain themselves. Play cannot continue. At least the referee, Paul Jojak, didn't want to let it go on until they got some of the crowd out of the end zone where they were still battling for that football. But now the officials are satisfied. James will kick off. Another wobbly bouncer, hard to handle. Macon going for it at the 10-yard line. Coming this way, reversing his field, turning on the steam, cutting in, and as he cut, he slipped down. At the 15-yard line, the fans break away from the police and come out of the field as the gun sounds to end the ball game. And your Grey Cup champions of 1959 defending successfully as they make it two wins out of three over the Ticats in their three years running battle are the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, the Bombers 21, the Hamilton Ticats 7. This is your Grey Cup football telecast coming to you from the Canadian National Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. Ward Cornell back with you again. Pandemonium here in CNE Stadium as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers win the rubber of the three-game series over three years. They win the Grey Cup. They proved that last year was no fluke, and they proved it very handily coming on with a strong display in the fourth and final quarter. A tremendous football game, a game that kept building up in excitement and tension as just a few points separated the two teams. Finally, the Bombers taking command in the fourth and final quarter with a great defensive team coming right to the foreground and then the offense taking over as they kept pushing back the Hamilton Tiger Cats on their tail on the tremendous punting by Charlie Shepard. Just to review the scoring, the Bombers took a 3 to nothing lead in the first quarter and a field goal by James. Later in the half, in the second quarter to be precise, Vince Scott came storming through to block a Shepherd kick. The ball went behind the line, but the Blue Bombers recovered and it went for a single point. That made it 3-1, to one, and that's the way it was at halftime. Halfway through the third quarter, the Ticats took over at the Winnipeg 35 and moved to the two. Honest Chuck kicked the field good. Field goal, Hamilton out in front, 4-3. to three. With less than two minutes left in the quarter, the Ticats moved from the 40 to the Winnipeg 20, and again, Honest Chuck came through with a field goal, and the Ticats led 7-3. to three. In the first three minutes of the fourth quarter, the Bombers moved from their own 35 to the Hamilton 35. The attack stopped, and Shepard kicked a single. That made it Hamilton 7, Winnipeg 4. Two minutes later, Tinsley recovered a Hamilton fumble at the 43, and perhaps that might have been the turning point. Plain then faked to two men, went back and threw long deep to Funston at the two, and that was the big play. Shepard took it over, the convert good, Winnipeg 11, Hamilton 7. And incidentally, for the Easterners, you'll recall that this is a play similar to the one that Russ Jackson used with the Ottawa Rough Riders this year, where the quarterback fakes twice, bootlegs the ball, and then throws to the dive man. And that was the same play, or almost the same play here. With eight minutes to go, Charlie Shepard came up with a 76-yard quick kick for a single point. That made it Winnipeg 12, Hamilton 7. With less than five minutes to go, Shepard kicked another long one for a single, 13 to 7. With a minute and a half left, Shepard boomed another one, 68 yards, another single, 14 to 7. Then with 20 seconds left in the ball game, Winnipeg got the ball at the 34, playing again. The double fake went back, threw to Pitts for the touchdown. The convert good, Winnipeg 21, Hamilton 7. Statistically, Hamilton picked up 11 first downs in the game. Winnipeg, 30. yards gained rushing for Hamilton, 71. For Winnipeg, 129. Passes attempted by Hamilton, 22, and completed 10. By Winnipeg, 11, and 4 completed. Yards gained passing, and this is the net. Hamilton, 91. Winnipeg, 106. All sorts of stars in this ball game. First of all, both defensive units 
tremendously good all day long for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, Tinsley and Delvo's names stand out there. Tackles were crunching all day. Tinsley's great pursuit work. You have to give a big bouquet to Kenny Plain, who ran the team magnificently offensively, never panicked when they were down in the fourth quarter, handled his backs well, passed well on the two big pass plays, and also played defensively all afternoon. Charlie Shepard punting, I don't think it's been... Uh, I don't think it's been challenged for quite a few years. We haven't got the actual average on the day for the punts, but his were tremendous. For the Thai Cats, Vinny Scott played his usual great game, perhaps an even better game than he customarily does, and he's always good. McDougal was giving it everything he had. He carried the ball a great deal and played a good ball game. Interesting for Easterners in this game. This is the first time that they've seen this uh, red-hot Winnipeg team at this time of the year for some two years, and it's interesting to note that in the fourth and final quarter today, this Hamilton Tiger team, which has been the strongest one in the East, on almost every play, you'll notice that these men were getting up slowly, that they perhaps suffered uh, more minor injuries than they have in the last year or perhaps the last two years, which all seems to indicate the claim and the boasts and, uh, well, the actual comments which proven true by the reporters from the West that out in Winnipeg and in the Western League, perhaps they hit harder than they do here in the East. Anyway, we saw a tremendous ball game this afternoon. Some wonderful plays, some wonderful speed everywhere, the blocking and the tackling crisp. The game had everything, including a very narrow point spread. So now the other teams in the West and in the East, I suppose, can say, well, the series is over, the three-game series is over between Hamilton and Winnipeg, and uh, the Bombers have won it. Now perhaps next year we'll get some other teams in the Grey Cup. Winnipeg and Hamilton may have something to say about that. Steve, Douglas, what have you got to say? Well, I uh, recommend very heartily that a big accolade go to Kenny Plain and or Coach Bud Grant for what I would call a daring piece of football with only about 11 seconds left to go in the ball game. 34 yards out from the Hamilton Cat goal line, leading by the margin of a converted touchdown that we must remember can always be equalized, although the Cats had not been deep too many times in Winnipeg territory during the game, but there was always a chance for a breakaway run. And with Ernie Pitts having been racked up in the end zone about uh, three or four plays later and being helped off the field, he comes back on as soon as the Bombers take possession of the football. And Plain fires right down the middle to Pitts, who beats his defender and is in the end zone for a touchdown. But I'm sure the captains and the coaches are going to have something to say about that in just a few moments. Right now, this is your Grey Cup football telecast coming to you from the Canadian National Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. The coaches, the captains, everybody standing by in the bomber dressing room. Let's go down to Ted Reynolds. You can imagine things have been rather hectic down on ground level, but now for a presentation for television viewers across Canada of the Grey Cup to the winning Winnipeg Blue Bombers, the president of the Canadian Football League, Mr. Don McPherson, and the commissioner of Canadian football, Mr. Sidney Halter. The presentation made to the co-captains of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Herb Gray, and uh, Bud Tinsley, right in here, fellas, if you would. Boys, uh, Sir John McPherson and I are privileged to present to you the Grey Cup emblematic of the Championship of Canada. Congratulations, boys, on a on a Thank excellent you. win over very worthy opponents. <laughs> Thank you very much. Fine. Congratulations, Bud. Congratulations, Herbie. Thank you very much. Very good. Congratulations, boys. Thank you very much. Now. Just a word from the co-captains, the winning co-captains. Uh, Herb, you were saying a minute ago you wouldn't trade this moment for anything? No, that's the greatest feeling. I thought last year was a good feeling, but uh, uh, as a rubber match, I mean, it was good to win uh, another one from Hampton, which is one of the, oh, it's the toughest team I've ever played against. Uh, I think they're better than they were last year. And uh, just like I said last year, it's not only the fans in Winnipeg that I'd like to thank. It's for all the fans throughout Western Canada that gave her support to us. And uh, 
We certainly needed it, and it helped us a lot because we had a lot of telegrams and a lot of letters. I know those boys reading them up there this morning really got a feeling inside that they wanted to win this game. Bud, you've been having thrills in football for a long time now. Is this one of the biggest? Yes, sir. Last year and this year was my biggest thrill, and uh, I want the people of Hamilton to know that we uh, really regard their team as very highly. They had a very good football team. It's a football team they should be proud of. Uh, Winnipeg uh, thinks that they're just about the tops, besides us, of course. <laughs> and uh, I also would like to thank, as Herbie said, all the many follows we had in uh, the West and the East. And uh, I certainly hope the boys will be down here again next year and uh, maybe it'll be Hamilton again. Thank right. you. Congratulations to both you and all the members uh, of your winning Winnipeg club. I'm sure you thank you very much. You. We have the co-captains of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, uh, Bernie Filoni and Steve Honestchuk. Uh, Bernie, this is two years in a row that you've had to uh, talk from sort of the wrong side of the street. The Winnipeg fellows expressed the opinion this was uh, perhaps a lot tougher game than last year. Yes, I think it was a lot tougher ball game. I think it was a harder, uh, a rougher ball game all the way through. And uh, except for Kenny Plain's two passes, it was, it was right down to the wire. And, and he did a wonderful job in the absence of Jimmy Van Pelt. I would say that uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were just as strong. Uh, did they show you anything unexpected? Uh, did they do anything or play in any way to uh, surprise you over what you had expected, Bernie? No, they played just the way we did. We expected them to play hard, rough, tough football and uh, give it everything they had right down to the end. Steve, by the way, how's that uh, injury of yours? Well, still hanging on there. It's still harnessed. Yeah. Uh, did you find this a tougher game than last year? Uh, I think it was. Uh, I don't think the, the score was indicative of the play. Uh, as Bernie said, they got uh, two good TDs, but they played well, and they played well enough to win. I think uh, they played well from the, the strategy point of view. They punted every time uh, on second down to keep us in our own end, and it was a good ball game. I imagine you fellas are looking forward to about a year hence now. Well, that's what I said last year. Wait till next year, but I guess we have to say it again. I hope so. Fellas, thanks very much for putting up a wonderful football game and for coming in. The coach now of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Jim Trimble. Jim, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, I don't know what I can ask you, but uh, <laughs> it was a, a rough, tough, hard football game. We thought we might have had one uh, at halftime, but I think the, uh, the true analysis of the game, the, uh, the overall strength of the Winnipeg team, their balance and their depth, uh, their versatility, Shepard's quick kicking hurt us. Uh, I think that uh, I think that they played better and certainly deserved to win. i kind of sorry that they got that last score. 14-7 uh, to 7 might have been a little more respectable, but uh, they certainly earned their victory. Uh, like I said, I thought we had it at halftime, but I think their youth, perhaps, or their complete balance uh, was the final uh, difference. We don't want to raise anything controversial about uh, conditions or anything at this stage of the game, but do you think that the that the fact that it was a little greasy out there hurt the game. I won't say either club, but hurt the game itself. Well, it would hurt both teams. Like I said during the week, uh, the wet ball caused the breaks. Uh, the, uh, we, we wanted a good day for the fans. We wanted a good day. The field was in good playing condition. I mean, it wasn't responsible for our loss in any, in any sense at all. Well, Jim, thanks very much once Back. again. Congratulations Back. on a, uh, a good fighting football team, and now the winning coach, back for the second year in a row in this uh, happy position, Bud Grant. Uh, I just spoke to you briefly before the game, and you were a very concerned-looking man. You seem to have relaxed suddenly in the last couple of hours. Well, it feels like a great load off your back. Uh, it really does. It's, this Grey Cup is uh, a fantastic experience. Uh, it's hard to describe. Uh, the emotions run so high, I, I, can, I can appreciate just exactly how Hamilton feels. A great football team that uh, went down to defeat, but certainly without uh, any shame or disgrace. They played their hearts out, uh, just as we did, and uh, uh, it's just a wonderful experience. I've never experienced anything like it in my life. But it was 3-1 at half time. It looked like the game might set a record for low scoring. Then in the third quarter, you didn't go any place, offensively speaking. Uh, did you... Uh Pull something, change something, uh, you, you started to go after that. Well, the only thing we changed was goals, uh, ends of the field. Now, they, that one end there was awful tough to move in. The other end was a lot better. Uh, and it just so happened that the wind 
favored uh, the bad end of the field so that you, when we had the wind, uh, we could keep Hamilton in the hole and with the quick kick get the point. And by the same token, when they had the wind, they snuffed us out down in that end. You can't move on that one one end there. It was awful, awful tough to get any timing at all. And, of course, uh, we had the wind in the fourth quarter. Uh, we gambled. We took the wind in the fourth quarter, and uh, it just worked out right for us. Imagine when you get home, you're going to uh, insure Charlie Shepard's right foot for many, many thousands of dollars. Uh, what about those quick kicks? Uh, do you call those on the bench, bud? Uh, I th yes, we call those on... Uh, I think every occasion it was uh, it was a big a play for us, yes. Well, he certainly booted. I think one of them went over 70 yards and one was a Well, we haven't year. used it a lot this year, but uh, it's a good play and the conditions and the one thing or another were just uh, right for it uh, this afternoon. When is your club going to arrive home in Winnipeg, bud? Uh, we arrive home, I think, sometime Sunday afternoon about 4 o'clock and don't, uh, I'm not sure of that, so. But it will be sometime tomorrow. S Sunday afternoon and I think one of the, I know there's going to be a tremendous reception in Winnipeg. And I think that was one of the determining factors. There isn't a boy in this ball club that wanted to go home to that arena full of people without that great cup. Well, you Winnipeg folk, you'll hear all the news, I know, on your local radio and television stations out there between now and tomorrow afternoon. But the club will be home tomorrow. Bud, again, congratulations on another uh, grand victory by a really fine ball club. Thank you very much. And now back upstairs again to Steve Douglas and Ward Cornell. It's back up top in our CBC telecasting booth. The score again, Winnipeg Blue Bombers 21, Hamilton Tiger Cats 7. For a final comment on the ball game today, Steve Douglas. I think all that's uh, been said already pretty well covers the situation, Ward Cornell. However, once again, it's a very great pleasure to work on such a great ball game and to work with such a great gang of guys that we have had the pleasure of associating with all season long. And this is the fine wrap-up to a fine football season once again. Especially nice to have Ted Reynolds back in camp again after too long a time away. And for the Westerners, congratulations. For the Hamilton Ticat fans, better luck next year. Ward Quinn. So the Bombers go home tomorrow for a big reception and with the Grey Cup. This is Ward Cornell for Hal Walker, John Kearns, your play-by-play -play commentators, Steve Douglas and Ted Reynolds, and our whole telecasting crew bidding you good afternoon. This has been your Grey Cup football telecast coming to you from the Canadian National Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. Mm -hmm.